Hello and welcome back to Drum Key. This is the podcast where we talk about everything drums, drumming, and drum industry. I am joined here with my co-host, Mr. Sean Groff. How are we doing? I am doing very well. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm great. I'm psyched for our guest today. Me too. We have an awesome show. Got a lot of topics here that I didn't brief you on, so I'm very excited to just throw these at you. I, I um, love to not be briefed. I love to you know come off the cuff with this, yeah. and, and for better or worse, I love it. All right. Well, uh, to start off, we should mention we are recording inside of our home away from home, Drums Etc., the Drummer's Pro Shop. Yeah, literally my home away from home. I think this is, uh, oh. I live I live here. I was expecting you to come in with in beautiful Lancaster. In beautiful Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Yeah, that's right, Sean. I missed my cue. It's all right. I'm a little it's rusty. Right. It's our home away weeks. from home, Drums Etc., the Drummer's Pro Shop. In beautiful Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Awesome. All right, well, quick plug for our guests later in the podcast. We have Mr. Rick Hamilton on the show. Oh. Studio audience is going nuts. Um, he is, if you don't know, the founder of Drums Etc., which I thought of this last night when I was preparing. The founder. Sounds so official. I love it. Yeah. Sounds so good. Yeah, sounds but he is official. the founder of Drums Etc., owner and operator um, for over 35 years, started in 1985. Wow, a very, very, very long time ago, um, and a good year. Great year. Great year for movie, great year for drum shops, uh, great year for drumming. Gosh, what a great year 1985 1985. Was. So we're going we're gonna to dive into that and hopefully start. I'm going to see how far back we can, we can convince him to go. Start in 1985 and bring it up till present day. Maybe before 1985. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll have not, to wait I'm, and find out. You know, I, I know a little bit about, you know, Rick starting out and, yeah. and beginning his journey. And uh, I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag, but, you know, maybe you should start before 1985. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that uh, wherever the idea started, okay. his history will start there, it's, work our way up. If this has to be a 10-part series, we will make that I, happen. That's uh, so what I said. You know, this should be a three-part series, really. Well, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. If, if we end up with too much, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll cut it for your listening pleasure and maybe make it a two-parter, make yeah. a three-parter. We'll see what happens. Um, the good news is I, I cleared my schedule. I hope you have, too. We will be here nah. as long as it takes. All right, so... Moving on, we uh, Sean's got places to I be, got man. To do, man. It's all right. It's good. Th that's usually when you disappear, anyway. Um, all right. So starting out, let's start with our segments here. Uh, this one's gotten great reviews. We're going to crank it up, turn it down. All right. So crank it up, turn it down. In this segment, I read some controversial drum habits. And we get Sean's opinion on it because I love doing this uh, day to day um, with with him, and he's got he's got very sound opinions. This is the part of the show where I don't brief him on the subject matter, no so we are going to up. get unfiltered. Sean, again, I'd like to remind everyone: this is not to create enemies. This is to just share an opinion here and uh, discuss a little bit. So, starting out. First one up on the list here, Sean. Yes. Crank it up, turn it down, cleaning your cymbals. Turn it down. Wow. That was very, the, very quick. That was the fastest Very, very quick. Got. Yeah. And, turn, and turn it down. Dive into that. Okay, I'll dive into it. Um, I cleaned my cymbals, my, my cymbals personally, mm -hmm. one time in my life, and it was one of the worst things I ever did. It was one of the worst experiences. <laughs> it was messy. It was gnarly. And, you know... I, I asked my drum teacher about it afterwards. I said, hey, you know, I was cleaning my cymbals, and, you know, is this or that. And uh, my, my drum teacher, his name was Brock Warner, and uh, he said, don't clean your cymbals. He said, the dirtier, the grimier, the better. The better they sound, the better age they are, the better they sound. And I don't think I understood right away what that meant. Yeah. But as time goes on, my cymbals have sounded better and the symbols that i have now i've had for probably over 20 years most of them now yeah and they i was playing this morning and i was just thinking how great my symbols sound because they're i've never cleaned them mm -hmm. it's like a cast iron you know frying pan you don't want to really clean that thing you want to wipe it down a little bit but you don't want to clean it mm -hmm. you know you clean season it, it. Yeah, you, you, you want it, it seasoned yeah i love that a yeah seasoned a symbol. seasoned symbol that's I'm your ideal point, symbol yeah i'm I'm going to take that. Symbol seasoning. That. Symbol seasoning, but um, I think drums and cymbals need to look like they've been played as well. 
You know, mm-hmm. there, there's a stigma to that, and I, I think it's a, a personal thing that people have. They they want their their drum heads to. I've, I've been asked that too. Uh, how do I clean my drum heads? Man, don't do that. That's the most foolish thing you could pe- possibly do. Cleaning <laughs> your drum heads. I'm like, no. Yeah. There's nothing more beautiful than looking at a set that has stick marks all over it and it's been played. Symbols have been played. You look like you spent some time back there woodshedding mm-hmm. and practicing. And I think that, uh, you know, the, the, the older the symbol, the better it tends to sound. And when you clean your symbol, you uh, remove a lot of that, uh, that, that good filth. You, <laughs> good you, filth. You, you remove yes. a lot of that good yep gnarly filth that yep, makes you, the symbol sound the way that it does with all its beautiful overtones and characteristics that it, that it has mm-hmm. so uh, don't clean your symbols uh um with that being said if you need to clean your symbols <laughs> i would recommend buckaroo um and I'll, I'll say this because you know there is a time sometimes uh you know here at the shop if we sell a symbol you know, you want to clean it up a little bit, especially if you're shipping it to a customer or what have you. So a little buckaroo will take some fingerprints off and, and do that if you need to polish it up maybe for resale or something like that. I would even not do that. But if you have to do it, get buckaroo. There's my shameless There's plug. your, your yeah. two cents. Yeah. yeah, I think a lot of this, this controversy just comes from people's opinion of just the aesthetics of their drum set. And, and I understand if you've got brilliant cymbals, you know, French fry fingers, we always call that around yeah. the shop. When someone picks up a symbol like this, sure. you've got that. Oh. You've got, you've got, you could probably use you that fingerprint. Cringe. That that reminds me of like spy movies where they take the fingerprint and they take the tape yeah. and take it off. Sometimes with a brand new brilliant symbol, French fry fingers comes in and instead of crashing the symbol and just letting it ring out, yeah. and there it is, their yeah. thumbprint. You know yeah, what I mean? I know. And, and I think that, back to the aesthetics thing, I think that's, it's, it's one of those things where I understand if you want it to look a certain way, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Do what you want to do. Sure. I do also believe that no one really cares about your drums. No. I, I think that it, if it's a personal <laughs> thing, if it's a personal thing, Us do it. Us drummers care. Of course. We care, you care and we listen, notice. Of course. But I'm saying you show, you show, we've both done this where we've gone to a band practice with a different drum set and yeah. no one said a word. I once played <laughs> a different color drum for a gig. Different bass drum different rack tom different floor tom jelly bean kit jelly bean kit and no one said a damn thing no one in my band no <laughs> one watching said anything or asked any questions about it and mm-hmm. uh, i i knew that that would happen but yeah. i wanted to test that theory and uh my hypothesis all was right correct. so we're turning it down turning down clean your symbols cleaning your symbols turning it down next up sean real quick got a second one here for you crank it up turn it down drum gloves Drumming with gloves. Turn it down. Double. Double negative. Double negative here. And this is a first because our our first two podcasts, I was one for one. Yep, one up, one down. Now I am cranking it down for both of them. Drummer's gloves, I think they're cumbersome. I think that, uh, you know, you really want to feel that that stick in your hand and to, you know, really develop your technique. Um, you know, some drummers have issues with blisters. We all get them here and there, uh, you know, but uh, I think that, you know, if you spend some time really focus on your, your technique, um, you will not need gloves. Um, also, another reason for having gloves would be, you know, you might drop your sticks, I guess. Would mm-hmm. be re- oh, I dropped yeah, the my grip. sticks, so I need, I need. I think I have worse grip when I put gloves on and try, I've tried it. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I had some let me let me try gloves and I just I don't like the feel. Mm-hmm. Um, Got to say that uh, and you look like a goofball too. So uh, <laughs> yeah. you know you look like a goof. Don't wear gloves. What's wrong with you, man? What's wrong with you? Um, <laughs> crank it down. Turn it down. Crank, crank, he's not only turning it down. He's cranking crank it down. down. He really does not approve of this one. However, <laughs> if you do need gloves, I recommend the Ahead gloves they they tend to fit the best it's um, true they come small medium large don't, and extra don't large. get anything but large or extra large yes it, yeah you, they run if real you're small going, if if you need gloves get the ahead gloves they are the best all right but crank two, it down 
crank it down. We got to turn it. No cranking it up. We're turning it down and then cranking it down on the drum gloves. All right, so let's move forward to our next segment here, Drum Industry News. All right, so drum industry news. This segment, we try to highlight certain aspects of the drum industry that folks may have uh, flipped backwards. They may have uh, misconceptions about, and we try to just clear the air and just tell you from our experience um, what the truth is behind the, uh, the specific facet of the drum industry. This week, we are going to be talking about drum endorsements. Now, I already kind of jumped the gun by saying have people think they have it backwards. People seem to have it backwards. People, I say people, a lot of drummers that come in here looking for endorsements that talk to us about it are under the impression that the, the drum company is endorsing them. Right. They're under the impression that the uh, company is, they're so good that the company wants to give them stuff. Yeah. Just so they can have it. Yeah. But it's actually the reverse. You yes. are endorsing the company. You are endorsing the gear and the brand. So that's right. why these companies are pretty choosy about who they want out there representing them. You can play, if you want to play a Tama drum set, I'm looking at one out in the showroom here. You can play a Tama drum set. There's nothing stopping you. You don't need right. to be endorsing, you don't you need to have an endorsement contract. Tama. You are endorsing, that's what's happening. Right. Um, but for them to float you some gear, for them to be, you know, establish that relationship, invite you to special drum events, um, you know, and highlight you for them to push, put you over the top. Um, they, they're going to be choosy about who gets yeah, an endorsement. And, and I think that's like, you know, also next level, you know, there's, that's reserved for very few drummers, you know, where they, the drum companies simply give you gear. Most, uh, musicians, drummers, guitar players, you name it, uh, will think that a, a drum endorsement or an endorsement in general is they give me free stuff. And right. that can't be any further from the truth. Uh, you endorse the brand. Um, uh, most will, especially smaller companies, will give you a, a, just a discount, maybe on right. something like that. Right. You know, especially if it's a, a small startup drum company, and yeah. like, oh, okay, you know, I'm endorsed by so and so drums. Well, they're not giving you drums; they're just uh, selling the drums to you at a little bit more of a discount than they would by you know from someone that that isn't endorsed. Yeah, um, right, and and not, and it's not going to be fifty percent off. Right, you know what I mean. Yeah. The the music industry in general, we can get into this a little bit. And the music store, if you go into your store and you see a twenty percent off sale, buy everything you can because that is a big deal. <laughs> it's not yeah, it's not huge. like a discount den um, clothing store where you go in and you you buy a shirt that was fifty five dollars and it's now yeah. five bucks. Yeah. That's rarely rarely going to happen right um so i would say especially musicians out there this goes for drummers and non-drummers if you're in a music store and you see a deal and it makes you think twice jump on it sure because it is a big deal especially on new inventory to have a discount of that caliber is doesn't come around every day that said back to the endorsement thing yeah. you know you might get five percent off yeah you might get that at your drum shop if you just ask sure yeah let us endorse you while you endorse us at the same time. Exactly. It's That's it's really just, how it works. An endorsement deal is a relationship that's written down under contract. No. You don't need to have a piece of paper to have an established relationship. You can actually get, I would say, 10, 20 times, depending on the endorsement we're talking about, more value out of a drum shop in a local drum store, developing that relationship, buying all your stuff there, You know, not just buying a big drum drum set or something like that, but buying your sticks there, buying your heads there, um, becoming a regular at a drum shop is going to bring you so much more value than, than, than pursuing an endorsement contract. By a fly-by-night symbol company. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I think that the, the, main, the main point uh, that, that I would want people to think of, if, if someone's kind of you know, on this uh, journey towards endorsement, they think that that's the way to level up. The way to progress and, honestly, to get that endorsement contract is actually – to just work on your playing. Just be so good that they can't ignore you. How about that? Be so good. Hook up with great musicians. 
Get in and the they'll band. Come, they'll come running. They'll, they'll come, come knocking. They'll come yeah. knocking. The moment you start, you know, I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, drummers and such at, at the NAMM show, uh, mm -hmm. you know, coming in and, and they're like, well, you know, I'll play these cymbals if you give them to me for free. That's the last thing that any company wants to hear. Right. Like, they, they're not like, oh, really? Oh, well, here you go. Here, take them, play them. Oh, my gosh, this is yep. what we've always wanted. This is what, what's going to get us to the next level and break us over the edge. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe it. No. It's not going to happen. No. That, they don't want to hear it's that. It's not going to happen. No, 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 it's no. not going to happen. Focus your energy on your playing, your rehearsing, your networking, and then those endorsement thing, opportunities will come knocking on your door. Your door. Don't badger companies for those. Hello? Uh -oh. um, don't badger companies for those. Um, but like I said, develop relationships with your drum shop, local drum shops. That's going to get you a lot farther. But I think we covered it. I agree. It. Yeah, that, that's, that was great that you said that. I like that. All right, so we'll move on to our next segment, Hall of Fame. All right, so our Hall of Fame section, um, we are naturally big drum gear nerds. That is true. That is very true. So we like to highlight certain products that are what we classify as game changers. Um, products that uh, have been around uh, for a long time, perhaps some, perhaps maybe maybe new. We're starting off with some legacy items, as legacy, I like to call yeah. them, ones that have been around forever. Uh, we we started out uh, well last week. I should highlight the Remo coated ambassador. Yeah, almost every snare drum you have, sure, you will find that Remo coated ambassador near and dear to all of our hearts. Uh, that that item that if you are were out of or close to being out of, we panic and go. What kind of drum shop is this? We, we don't start, have coded we, ambassadors. We don't know what to do. Yeah, what exactly. What is wrong with us? So this week, I've got a new one for us. The third inductee into the Drum Key Hall of Fame is the Vic Firth 5A drumstick. Here it is. The Vic Firth 5A. Made the Hall of Fame. There he is. The Swiss Army Knife of drumsticks <laughs> swiss army knife on drumstick that's right if you actually pull on this lever here that's right there's a bottle opener and there's yeah exactly uh, yeah. Yes, eh? uh -huh. um no but but uh according to vic firth the number one drumstick best the number one uh drumstick as far as sales is concerned yeah. and best selling uh, drumstick of all time yeah and i have to agree with that here just at drums etc probably our best selling single most popular drumstick for the past 20 years has been the Vic Firth 5A. So much so that, uh, you know, when we order sticks, we'll double up on, on these. Maybe mm -hmm. we'll get a dozen pair of, you know, whatever else in, 2B, Vic Firth 2B or whatever else, and then we'll get 24, you know, even 36 pairs of Yeah, Vic every Firth time, 5A. every time, What's tack that? it on there. Yeah, always. We always need Vic Firth 5A. And, again, this is also one of those uh, items that uh, – was my first spy mission assignments was to check local uh, music stores and mm -hmm. make sure that we had the absolute best price on 14-inch coated ambassadors and also Vic Firth 5A. What was Menchie's price on Vic Firth 5A? What was Music and Arts' price on Vic Firth 5A? Okay? These you're, are things that I spy. did. These are things that yes. I did. I had to, I had to go. Yeah. And look, I had to make sure. Look. had to make sure. Of course. That we had the best price. Of course. Okay. I can't wait to talk to your ringleader later and get his opinion right. on I know. him I'm, and the, the missions yeah. that he would send you yeah, out on. Yeah, I've been on many a mission. <laughs> Tons. <laughs> Tons of missions. So right. that, well, that was a fun mission, and it uh, you know, opened my eyes to the importance of, of certain signature uh, sticks, uh, products, the uh, Vic. Vic Firth 5A, yeah. uh, and that has been instilled into me, those mm -hmm. few items, you know. And uh, what I said about the Vic Firth 5A is that it's a good, just medium. What are the specs on it? I don't I'll give you the specs, Sean. Yes. I, this is me. Come on. For all of you listeners, I don't have this all is off this the stuff top of my head. I'm not I, reading I, I know a lot, but I, I, I don't have all this stuff memorized. 16 inches long, 0. .565 inches in diameter. Okay. I know. You were thinking .565. Five six four, uh, weren't yeah, you? I was. You, I could tell you were a little you light. Me. You read You're a little light. Me. You read um, it's got a medium taper. It does. And yeah, then yeah. it got the teardrop tip. Um, I think this this is a prime example of the. I forget what the exact name of it is, but there's there's this this theory. It's psychology that if you present someone with three options and they yeah. don't know anything, they will always pick the middle option. 
That's right. They will always go with the medium. Yeah. So if you've got a stick display and you've got seven A's, five A's, and five B's in that stick display. Nine times out of ten, someone who doesn't know anything, maybe it's someone buying something as a gift, or they're going to be like, well, let's just go with the medium. That way, right. if, even if it, they wanted the lighter, they wanted the heavier, it's not that far off, or this might be the perfect thing. And I think that uh, that is why most companies, not just Vic Firth, but most companies, uh, 5A model is probably their best-selling stick because it's mm-hmm. not too thin, it's not too big it's just right in the middle you can play some you know or ar- ar- you know, articulate some jazz and some yep. light uh, style yep. music or you can bash a little bit it's yep with with these sticks it's uh, not quite a swing. barrel tip it's not quite right. a round right. tip right it, it's it's the the uh the level medium the option c on multiple choice yeah. it is the the average yeah. of a lot of drumsticks and it's it's no wonder that so many of the artist models that we have are almost a 5a it might have a slight different tip. It might be a little bit longer. But this is the stick that so many artists are playing that when they get that opportunity through an endorsement, when they get that opportunity <laughs> to design their own stick, this is the starting point. I think uh, you know our first few inductees into the Hall of Fame are uh, – <laughs> I don't want to say lackluster, but they, <laughs> like, they, they kind of are <laughs> – yeah. yeah, yeah, but already uh, said it. I, I've already said it. They, they, they kind of are, but um, so, yeah. well, but it, well, it's not about that. It's, I, it's I not, will say, it's not about that. I will say this. It's not about the, the drum the flash. key. No, the drum key Hall of Fame is about proven results. That's right. It's about popularity and proven results, and this is the kind of thing you're going to get. And no one talks about this. Right. That's why I want to talk yeah. about it. Is because no one talks about the standalone. It's brief spikes of this is new now it's now it's last year's sure. model. This is new now it's last year's model. Let's this talk about those standby reliable yeah. items that are gonna get, get you through. Every local drum shop you go in should have these. Right. And I think that we're, yeah. we're on the right track. Yeah. <laughs> that was me Lack- digging out of the lackluster <laughs> hole yeah, that know, you put right? us in. Jeez. <laughs> You're good at that. You're good. Well, at that. hey, I'm I'm the spin team here. Um, so let's move on to our next segment. Uh, where we uh, highlight some of the questions that might not be so quick. Here we go with quick question. All right. So diving into the quick question uh, segment here, without fail, if someone comes in and they say, hey, uh, quick question, it is bound to, they're bound to be there for 45 minutes, an hour. Just listening to us explain the differences between things, the options, um, where they went wrong, politely correcting them, no matter what it is. If Mm -hmm. someone says, hey, quick question, it's bound to take a long time to answer that question. So in this long form content here, I like to dive into it and talk about it, talk through the entire, um, the entire question. um, And, you know, the answer to that question, because there's going to be ton of variables that go into it. Um, So, Sean, quick this question. This quick question actually has a little bit of a asterisk next to it. Oh. This quick question is coming from somebody who is standing in front just giving you a little context. Okay. Who is standing in front of our context. symbol wall. Right? They're standing in front of our symbol wall with a confused look on their face and they turn to you and they say, "Quick question. What's the difference?" What is the difference? Wow, where do you be It's not a quick question. It's not a quick question. That is not a quick question. That's the point, yeah. That is the point. So where do you start? Where do you dive in? Do you dive into materials? Do you dive into brands? Do you dive into into feeling them out, knowing, trying to figure out exactly how much information that would yeah. will not be information yeah, overload? Because you could I, talk I, about symbols I for I think days. I'll qualify uh, whoever I'm talking to first because you don't want to get ahead of uh, – you know yourself with uh, talking about uh, you know the different styles of metals and cast and B8 bronze to someone that's maybe just starting out or doesn't even care nonetheless or is just looking for something on a budget or just going for sound. I mean, there, you know, so you say, oh, well, what do you have now? You, you know, it's always good to ask questions, you know, and, and find out what they have. Maybe you know they already have a slew mm-hmm. of symbols, and you know, just uh, getting to know whoever is asking you a quick question. Uh, so then I'll go from there. I can switch gears. Okay. So you really want to know why, you know, maybe this, uh, K custom symbol is $300 versus this Zildjian, uh, you know, I series. Now it is, I almost said ZBT. I'm dating myself. Uh, I series, which is their kind of like, you know, uh, 
uh, entry level style symbol, uh, right? B eight bronze symbol. Um, so you, you know, then you get into the the inner workings of how they're made, you know, right? And and all that kinds of stuff. So, well, let's let's break it down real quick for folks who might yeah. not know. I recommend this to every drummer. If you haven't done this already, um, Sabian's got a good video. Zildjian's got a great video that walks you through the process at the factory. Um, but essentially, I'm just going to do a, a quick version of what happens. Why is a symbol so expensive? And we're talking cast symbols here. The more expensive materials and the longest process that can a symbol can go through. So essentially, start out with molten metals, combine them, mix them to get the perfect blend of bronze that you're looking for. Your um, and uh, then you start out by, well, they start out. We don't do this. Yeah, we don't do that. They start out. We don't do any of this. Um, we don't see the symbol till way later. Um, they start out by pouring that molten bronze into molds. You essentially end up starting out with like a hockey puck sized. Uh, casting of bronze mm -hmm. right then that is rolled a bajillion times these are all ac accurate number figures you roll that a bajillion <laughs> times yeah bajillion bazillion not quite a bazillion it's a bajillion, bajillion. just underneath uh you roll that back and forth flatten it out then that's where they they punch the shape of the symbol together so once that metal has become pliable to heat it up a little bit essentially give it your basic rough outline shape then they got to make it a circle right because at this point it's all gnarly cut the edge off then it goes into the, the treatment process, whatever it needs to be done as far as hammering is concerned. Um, so that's when you'll see the guys like uh, at Sabian with the hammers or on the machines, you know, at other yeah. symbol Machine manufacturers. Hammered, hand hammered. Yep, exactly. That's where those hammer marks um, are each done either by hand or by machine. And that um, affects the sound. Everything, every time you smack a symbol, you're affecting the end result, yeah. right? Um, at this point, even if they smack them, they don't sound that great. Um, what they end up doing is moving forward and going into the lathing process. Lathing, essentially, they take a symbol, smack it up vertically on a wall like this. It rotates um, a bazillion times per minute, and then they take a big, sharp knife, and they cut material away. Yeah. Now, where they're cutting material away, how much they take off, how much they leave on, this all changes the sound. Um, you might be familiar with a lot of raw bell rides. That means they skip the lathing on the bell. The whole symbol used to look that way. But somehow that's more expensive, though even though they do less work. I've always wondered that. <laughs> Quick question. Why, why is it more expensive question. then? <laughs> we'll dive into that on the next okay. episode. That sounds good. Um, no, that's funny. That is a good point, though. But anyway, um, lay the top, lay These the bottom. These are the things that keep me up at night. These are, exactly. Um, well, this is the audience for that. Can, you just you gave that to everyone. Yeah, they're in here. Oh, um, hi. But then, back to the process. The amount of lathing changes the sound. You'll see a lot of minor symbols. They won't lathe or they'll only lathe a little bit. Um, but... Long story short, there's a lot of work that goes into this. There's a lot of manpower, sure. a lot of processes that a symbol can go through. So if you walk into a drum shop and there's a symbol for $400, you're like, why is this $400? Mm -hmm. Let's compare it to a less expensive symbol. Mm -hmm. B8 bronze, less expensive material, sure. rolled out in a sheet, punch it out, done. Yeah. Right. That's the difference. Yeah. That's why you walk in and you see a $75 symbol or a $400 symbol. Right. That's it. There's automation, there's machines, punch it out of a giant slab of metal. Sure. And don't we wish that the punched out symbols sounded better than the not? Be, that would be in an ideal world. Yep. That would be awesome. But as it turns out, it doesn't sound better. It really doesn't. And uh, yeah, yeah. And it's one of those things. It's one of those things where you know you come in, pick out what you want. There's of course different brands. Not to get into anything crazy, but the car comparison. Everyone's got their sedan. Everyone's got their Ferrari level. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, there's different levels and different things like that. But the best thing to do, go to your local drum shop. Talk to someone there. If you don't know anything, talk to them. Ask for the recommendations because, again, they're going to be able to give you the best value. Symbol prices change all the time. Sometimes a company will raise their prices, but the other company hasn't caught up yet. Mm -hmm. That'll save you a few, a few bucks. So communicate with your local drum shop, and we'll get you the best thing. Yeah, and I, I have to say – just to add to that, uh, I love cymbals. I think I love cymbals more than, you know, having a new drum come in, you know, seeing a, a slew of cymbals come in used or new for that matter. I love going through them and testing them because, you know, not all cymbals, even though they might be the same make and model, sound the same. Mm -hmm. So you really, you know, a lot of getting in there and, uh, you know, testing all the different cymbals out. So I think cymbals excite me more than like, oh, a new snare drum coming in. Or, you know, whatever else. I love seeing new symbols come through the door. Love Absolutely. It. All right. So I think it's time to bring on our guest oh. for this section of the podcast. Um, so like we said before, we've got Rick Hamilton um, 
going to be sitting where you're sitting momentarily. Um, he is a founder of Drums Etc., plays in Popscotch, three-hour tour. Um, he's a, an instructor here at Drums Etc., which is awesome, so you can take some lessons from him. Um, and if you need a place to stay while you're in Lancaster, or not while you're in Lancaster, if you're moving to Lancaster and you need a place to live, check out 550 Lofts. The old Drums Etc. building is now Apartments, and he'll hook you up with a great deal there. Um, but we are going to bring him on the show today, and we will transition into our segment, Between the Plies. All right, so we are back here on Drum Key, and Rick Hamilton is sitting next to me. I am very excited for you to be here. I'm very excited to be here. I think this is an awesome show, Adam. I oh, have seen you. them. Awesome. Uh, I stay up late and watch these, and I'm totally entertained. I think it's the greatest idea. So good well, job I appreciate with that. it. I appreciate the feedback. Yeah. This idea started with you. I, I don't know if you realize this or not, but it's uh, drum shop talk. It is. That's what we do. Uh, I was just watching you guys do this first segment, and uh, I can't. I could barely contain myself because I like to get into these conversations, and mm -hmm. you know I couldn't be in there. But man. That's what we do here, right? That's, that's what you do at drum shops. You talk. And all the drummers talk. And that's like the – that's what – that's that's why it's cool to be in a drum shop. Um, you can't get any of that stuff online, you know. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, you need to show up to the drum shop, see the same familiar faces there. It's such, it's such no. a vibe. It's a vibe. It is a vibe, and you can't replicate that digitally. Uh, I've tried to yeah. do Zoom calls and different things. like It just – it doesn't work. And you know what's cool, too, is that it's a drummer thing. I mean, guitar players, maybe they share some of that, but there, a lot of those guys you know, are afraid to share their secrets and everything. Drummers are totally out with everything. They're passionate. They share stories and, and, and all. Like, Can you imagine going into a trumpet store and trumpet players standing around going, yeah, man. You know this about that trumpet and <laughs> yeah. this trumpet. I was, gonna, like, I was waiting for you to bust out trumpet <laughs> facts. I was like, <laughs> "Oh yeah, this about this." I love it. I love it. Yeah. But you're right. You're yeah, right. They you will never see no. that because they 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 have nothing to talk about. But man, you get a drummer, two drummers, or three or four drummers together, and it's just like it can go on for hours. And that's how you can have this show. That's it. And it's excellent. I'm glad to be here. Drum key, drum key place to be so cool whoa there's a slogan. all right i know Drum you key the place to be <laughs> wow rhymes and everything yeah. um but yeah I, I i have a bunch of bunch of questions for oh, you yeah i can't wait and i i can't wait to dig in um all right but just wanted to quick uh take a moment to first off thank you i took over the reins from you and was able to really skyrocket yeah. this based off of a an yeah. incredible like this is this much of the mountain was built and i'm up here um starting with um, unbelievable foundation 35 years in lancaster county it's truly an honor Aww. and you're 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 a role model for me so i appreciate you being Aww, here I appreciate thanks. you still being i'm so glad that you still teach here and like you're not out of it you, of course you would never be out of it but well, i'm I so love glad it. i'm teaching here too because uh like after doing that for 36 years coming to work every single day and worrying about all this mm -hmm. and that uh you know not having to just go away and being able to still come in and see Sean, you know, that alone, you know, that would, yeah. you know, I don't want all my friends here and everything, you know, it's like a family. Yeah. And it was nice to be able to just kind of come in and, uh, and I think I've been very good. Now we've never talked about this and, okay. and it's a well, great time a to great talk time about to, it. Let's talk know? about it. Imagine doing a job for 36 years in mm -hmm. which most of the responsibility falls on you yeah. And then one day it's done. And then you go into the job and someone else is running the show. Now, do you know how hard it is to keep your mouth shut? <laughs> and how good have I done? He's done incredibly well, folks. Uh, pretty good. He's done incredibly well. Pretty He's, good. He has. I don't say, you know, yeah. a lot. And not, not that there is a lot to. To, to say, I'm yeah, just no, saying, I understand. Of course, you know, it's just every like little detail. When when you're used to managing a store and you're in that place where mm -hmm. you used to have a different role, it's got to be bizarre. And yeah. yeah, no, 
Incredible. Yeah, yeah, just Incredibly patting myself done. on the back. Yeah, no, man. I appreciate it. And you're getting me to publicly admit it. A couple too, of things so. I want to talk to you about, though. Uh, now, yeah. <laughs> now that I have you in front of an audience, <laughs> no, let's dive into just this. Just kidding, just kidding. No. You're no, doing a I, great job. And thank I'm, you. I'm, yeah, I'm very yeah. – and well, uh, it was time. You know, I need to step down because, man, you, you have a lot of great new ideas, and including this one. And, and you know, it's a fresh set of eyes, and, uh, you know, it's, it's good. Yeah, well, I love having you around because I, I just went to you yesterday with – Hey, this is what I'm dealing with. You're the only one who can get it because you've done what exactly what I'm doing, and I love having you as a as a resource to tap into and to talk to about talk Mi- through Mi- ideas with. Misery loves company. I guess you're right. <laughs> I guess you're right. I love being able to complain to Rick because he gets it. No, but let's talk about the All beginning. Right. Let's start at the beginning. And I was Sean's okay. right. The beginning is not the first drums, etc. The beginning is before the first drums, etc. Okay, let me set it up. Go ahead. Take it away. I was a music store rat. Back in the day uh, in Lancaster, Pennsylvania and, and other communities around the United States, we had like, uh, I counted them up one day, 12 or 15 music stores in Little Lancaster, right? Can you imagine that? 12 or 15 wow. music stores. And uh, our, you know, my thing was to go to those music stores and hang out. That's what my friend and I would do. Um, when I got to be around 15 and, and my friend was 16 and he had a license, we would, we would be at my house and we'd say, what do you want to do? Let's go to the music stores. Okay. So we had, uh, uh, real quick, we had three Don Randall's music stores, mm-hmm. two malls, a downtown store. We had uh, Mariani's. We had the Music Center. We had Stephen Nicholas. Uh, we had Manor Music Mansion. Uh, we had uh, Darnell's, Tiny Wright's. Uh, uh, I'm sure I'm, uh, you know, there's a couple more because yeah. one day I listed them all. But anyway, we would go in the store and just hang out just all day. And when we got tired of one, we would go to another. So anyway, that my, uh, you know, amusement with music stores goes back to then. Right. And when I got the first opportunity to, to work in one, my good friend Jamie Hess said, you know, gave me that opportunity when I was around 20. And so I went to work at the music center, and, they, okay. and the drum shop was up top, drum department. Okay. And I got it. It, it was just uh, me up there. They put me up there, and I worked maybe, uh, I think, Friday nights and maybe some Saturdays. And that's where I started. I looked around. I was by myself, and I would say, you know, this would look cool if I could rearrange these drum sets, you know, and and, mm-hmm. and then the, the uh, owner would say, hey, Rick, I really liked what you did up with those drum sets, yeah. you know. And then I would start talking to people when they yeah. came in. And it, one thing led to another, and that's – I started to see things that were wrong with it. And, the, and, the, and no, no diss to the owner there. He, he, that's how music stores were then. There wasn't yeah. really full-fledged drum shops. Yeah, the specialty shop idea hadn't been super no. thought out. No, it was it was we deal with music. We're a music shop, which means we'll cover all of this to some degree. Yeah, a little bit here and there. Right. And then depending on what the owner's expertise was, that's sort of is that's where it leaned. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. And it's it, it's a little bit that way still. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, now there's what? There's no music stores around. Right. There's there's three. There's Guitar Center, and that's not really a music store, is it? For the time and being, And then, uh, yeah. uh, you know, there's drums, et cetera, and then there's a guitar place across the uh, down the road. And that's what we got. And we went from 12 music stores that I could just pop off yeah. to this, you know? And so that's where we are now. And yeah. so this is so personable. Uh, to, if you want to be a music store rat now, you're going to come to drums, et cetera. That's where, you, that's where all the rats are. And... Anyway, that was my. That's how yeah. I I got interested in, in all of it. And of course, I was a drummer and I love drums. I really thought that I was going to be like a rock star, you know, like most yeah. teenage kids. You know, I thought that was where I was headed. That was the goal. That was the dream. Was yeah. was to be a drummer in a yeah. in a band. Yeah. But I found my other niche, you know, which was I still got to be in the drum business, uh, but mm-hmm. it was it happened to be retail, you know. So that was a great avenue to go down. I went the retail, and I play an awful lot, too. Yeah. So uh, I've, I've carved out a, a nice niche in my life doing that. It was fun. And as you mentioned, we did it for 35 years. 
And uh, I just got to tell this quick. Uh, I got a thousand stories, but yeah. I don't even know where to begin. But I'm going to begin with this Go one. Go ahead. Yeah. The, the one I met you. Um, when I met Adam, the, the conversation was something like, uh, I think he came in on a school project, and he said, you know, I, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you wanted to do, a, what, what's it called, like an internship or, or something like that. So, the, yeah, there were two out. things. The, the first time I talked to you was a, a school project where we had to find a business or whatever. And I was like, the drum shop, I'm going to go. And I actually, like, filmed a little, like, fake commercial so that's okay. the first time. That's the first time I talked with you, and right. I remember. I remember showing up for that. Just real quick, I remember showing up for that, and I was all excited because I was going to like interview you for that. And here we are. In, here I am interviewing you. Look but I, I like part of that was like, oh, maybe I can interview the owner. And I showed up, and this was my first taste of what it's like to be a business owner. And you were out front, hanging off a, a step stool, barely able to reach the. You were painting the front windows, <laughs> and just covered in sweat. <laughs> And just like like in the middle of it, and I was yeah. like, "Oh, oh, you're you're that," and and you're like, "Yeah, go in there. Uh, you don't want me on camera anyway. You know what I mean? Let uh, the young guys do it. Let's you talk yeah. to Sean in yeah, here. So that was the first time. And then fast forward a few years later, then I showed up and said, "Hey, I want to do this. That's the and part I want I really to shadow. remember. I said I said shadowing because that's what I think Sean mentioned that term to me, and I was like, "Yeah, that I want to do that. Can I have Rick's info? And that's how we connected. Yeah, we had." Numerous shadow shadowers through the years. I always supported those kids, uh, always. You know, give them a chance, come in, and then we would not ignore them. Uh, all the guys in the store would would take part in showing them a, a part of the uh, process and how we do things. And then uh, many times I would take them to lunch. We would just walk over to McDonald's and get a sandwich, and you know, really take an interest and give them a good day. You know, give them a yeah. good experience. But you. Uh, I remember specifically you saying, do you care if I come here every Thursday? Yep. And I said, no, no one's ever asked me that. I, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, sure. Go ahead, kid. Eat your – go ahead. I thought that's going to last three weeks and he's going to be gone. Right. So, like, months, months go by. <laughs> You are there every single Thursday. You were yep. you were you, with Rustin. You were he, you you befriended Rustin. I remember that yep. our guitar guy at the time. And uh, well, guess who? Guess when we needed an employee? Who do you think's the first guy we're going to hire? The Amen. guy that knows all the systems, all the systems, and has been there free on his own will for all those Thursdays. It was an easy pick, right? And so that's hey, how we kind of got the stage. It, yeah, it it worked out. <laughs> I'm yeah. happy. I'm very happy. Yeah, with, that's really it cool. It worked out. But no, I I, I appreciate that. And now I've had a few kids come in. It's very full circle for me because I've had folks come in and for school projects or this or that mm -hmm. and shadow. And I'm like, yes, I love that. Paying it forward. Right. But then, but I'm kind of side eyeing them. I'm like, you're you're gunning for my job, aren't you? you know, right. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But I love being able to pay that forward. But back to your back to your uh where you were at you went on a side tangent. okay well yeah. uh i don't i don't know where i was at but i did bring a prop today and i got to show you it's a good way okay. to go into it right now oh absolutely okay. let's do it let's do it <laughs> before uh we were talking about chat gpt yeah oh my god always I, knew I am that's the kind of conversation with it I am obsessed with it. Yeah. From now on, it's going to be what this happened before ChatGPT and what happened after. Okay? I got it's it. It's like black and white TV, color TV, you know? The internet. The internet, Google, ChatGPT. Okay? Yeah. It's a new day. Yep. Yep. Anyway. I understand. 1985. I don't know what the song was that year, but it was probably Madonna and uh, Bon Jovi kind of stuff. You yeah. Know? Yeah. My first telephone for drums, etc. Whoa. On opening day, June 17th, 1985, was this. There it is. And look, 
it doesn't the cord does not even come out of it this yep. this lays on the counter like this and then you plug it into the wall so you're not going any further than that that's it you got what four feet yeah this this phone did so much business the first five years yeah I, that this that takes you by surprise, right? Five it. years. Five years. Yes, because there was no development. That's it. The only thing that was better than this was a big thing that you walked around your house that looked similar to this. But I couldn't afford that. We had no customers. I put this in the wall, and it works fine, right? Yep. What's funny, there's an on and off switch. I never – I can guarantee you I never turned this off in nope. five years, okay? That's – that. a lot of That's business it. was done here. There was no internet. There was no – I started a mail order catalog in uh, like around 87. Okay. Someone told me about drop shipping. Yeah. A rep came in and said, drop ship. I said, what's that mean? He means – and mm-hmm. he said – well, first of all, you give us money, and then if you want to ship a symbol to someone, we'll just do it for you. What? Are, you mean you'll ship it anywhere? Yeah, yeah, we'll do it for you. Oh, all right. So I started doing that. I sent out yeah. a postcard. Mm-hmm. Then I made a big postcard. Okay. And I made, uh, I think, five or 10,000 of them. Oh, wow. Okay. I did a test first. Yeah. And I made, like, I sold, locally? like... Locally? You just distributed them locally? No. Okay. How did I get that list? I don't remember how I got the list. I remember... Oh, I had an ad in Modern Drummer Magazine. Got it. Ad in Modern Drummer Magazine. Get symbols uh, for, you know, huge discount or something. And um, I ended... And so when that hit, I'm like, I- I'm going to go in now. So I bought five or 10,000 of these brochures. Uh, they were, like, two pages. Mm-hmm. And I sent them out, and incre- this thing was ringing off the hook, man. And I am talking, unlike today, yeah. I'm talking to everybody across the United States, you know. And I'm not used to people across the United States. So I'm talking to this guy from Yonkers. Rick, this is Chad from Yonkers. Where's my symbol, man? I, I ordered the symbol three weeks ago, yep. and I don't have my symbol yet. Yep. Well, back then, three weeks was good time. You know, to yeah. get something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? Now, if it's not there like, the next day, yeah, man, yeah. three weeks yeah. was okay. You know, yeah. Um, but uh, and then I I talked to someone down south. Hey, Rick, it's Chad. Hey, how's it going, man? Yeah. Hey, we want to get that symbol for me now. You know, and and then uh, <laughs> so I got to learn all these dialects across yeah. the. And it's, I got and it's to a lesson, and it, it's kind of a one of those culture shock moments because. You're now experiencing the country. Yeah, it was. But it could one, you know, one call after the next could be from anywhere. Yeah, and you talked to every single customer back then, mm-hmm. every single one, and, it, and in a way, it was good because you you could uh, you could develop your relationship with them. Right. You know, you have that impression. Yeah, you made friends with them, and then they were your friend, and they're confident they would they would trust you. And they knew you you knew your first name, and we. It's harder to do that now. Yeah. It's harder to do that online. You can do it to a certain point. I mean, right. the people here do. Yeah. They make friends and, uh, you know, but it, it was easier to do back then on the phone. So many things were easier back then and so many things are easier now. Hey, one more thing about that phone. Yeah, yeah. Wow. When I looked for the phone, I said, oh, I got to take this in too. Yeah. This was my I'm so first, glad you kept this. This was my first cell phone. There it Look, is. How old am I, right? <laughs> brownie, brownie, we're surrounded. We're surrounded. Uh, yeah. yeah. Look at that thing, man. It's got a belt clip here. Of course, it's got a belt clip. And uh, yeah. the only phones I've seen older than this are I have some older friends that had the like a battery pack that they actually the had carried, to carry yeah. around with yeah. them, you know, but. Look at a battery on that sucker. I love that. Okay. Amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm glad I'm so glad you brought those things. Yeah. Just to give a little context to the time period we're talking about. Yeah, 1985. 85. We we weren't um there was no internet whatsoever. I did not even think about it. 
Uh, the first uh, computer I bought was like 1990, and it told the time, I think. That was it. And uh, yet, as, as uh, we, we kind of had an re uh, industrial revolution of drums – in 1985, I mean, there was also one in the 60s and 70s. Yeah, sure. You know, the three big uh, Slingerland, Ludwig, Rogers. Yeah. You know, that was their Yeah, that, it, that, of course. And that was huge. Yeah, it's still but, carrying over today because yeah. of how big it was. Yeah. But in 1985 to 1999, those 15 years, man, so much stuff happened. I mean – Every single week, there was something coming out, and part, yep. parts were being made, and accessories, and pedals, and everything was being improved, and symbols were being improved, and the selections got so big, and uh, we we were in the middle of all that, and, and it was such a great time to uh, to have a music store. Yeah, yeah, um, and it's one of those things where when you're in the middle of an era of such progress that then it, it's hard to navigate what's like we were talking about the, the chat gpt thing and like it's hard to navigate what's really a trend and what's gonna stick and we talk about that you know in our shop talks and stuff like hey is i keep seeing this man should we jump on it and it's like we want to be cutting edge but at the same time you don't want to you know overstep yeah go back to that well one too many times you oh, know yeah. we always talk about that because yeah. it's one of those things then you're stuck with yesterday's fad yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So at, during that time, um, and 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 I'll, I kind of want to tie it into industry stuff a little bit because I know there are a lot of fans of that, and we talk about that kind of thing and dig into that. When you were starting out, um, I've mentioned on the show before that we have over forty companies that we get things from now and vendors, and a lot of them would only look at me because of the history they had with you, and you had to establish all those relationships. Mm -hmm. What was that like getting started carrying product? Was it just a phone call to a buddy, or was there all of this, no, we're going to look at your credit history and do this and do that, due diligence? Yeah, it was a little of everything. Um, I, had, uh, I had a good reference sometimes, uh, or uh, I would just make a cold call and say, uh, uh, for example, you know how some – well, let me let me start this way. Mm -hmm. When I first got a music store, like imagine going out to the mall. Imagine going to Boscov's. Yeah. And you want to start a store and you look at but you're like, how do they get all this stuff? Right? How how do where do you begin? Right? Where do you start? When you go to a music store, are you ever wondering, how do you get all this stuff? Well, my friend in the same band I played in, uh, Matt Creeder, Creeder, Creeder Music in uh, Jonestown, Pennsylvania. He's still there. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in the same band. Three months ago, I said, hey, Matt, I think I'd, I think I'd like to do a store because he had one. And he goes, yeah. come on up to my store. I'll show you how to get the stuff. That, there it is. That's it. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> wow. I, rest, I always wondered that. The rest is history. You had a friend who did it. Yeah, I had no a friend. No one knows how it ever started. It was just word of mouth. Where do you think friends. you get the stuff? I'm asking the fans out there, huh? Yeah. Where do you think you get all the stuff? Well, I'll tell you. There are... Middle people who deal with the manufacturers who have all the stuff, and they will let you buy the stuff for a small profit for them, and then you get to buy this as much stuff or little as much stuff as you need. You can pick. It's like picking in a catalog. You can do it. That's how it's done. All right. Now, there's qualifying. You know. You have to you have to uh, promise them that you're going to buy a lot of stuff from them, and you have to uh, spend a lot of money. Yep. And you know, so that's where that's where it gets. Uh, you know, you have to have you have to promise that you're going to spend money with them. And depending on how the economy is, or what what year it is, is 1985 or is it 2023? All of those uh, specifications change. And as Every you year. have talked about in your other shows. Mm -hmm. It's different now than it was three years ago, and, and so on and so on. When I first started, uh, our first dealership, I think, was uh, Premier. That was the one I went for because the big ones, you know, were taken, and, and they didn't want to talk to me. You know, I wasn't doing the numbers, so they didn't want to talk to me. So I got Premier, and uh, uh, 
I remember Ludwig said, if you want us to, you're going to need to take 12 drum sets right now, and then, you know, you're going to have to buy some of, uh, so much of our hardware, and then, you know, by the end, year end, you need to do 24 sets, and that's how Yeah, that was your first, your first big offer that, that came to you. Yes, yes. And usually it was a dozen sets, and uh, uh, at minimum. Mm-hmm. And so on. And then it changed as, as years went on. Uh, Dale's Drum Shop uh, in Harrisburg was, uh, uh, I had friended Dale from going into a store before I had a store. And Dale helped us get started. He, he gave us stuff. He was already, you know, a, a Tama dealer and a Pearl dealer and a Simmons dealer. And uh, he would uh, give me some stuff. To, to get to help me get started, so I was just trying anything I could. Yeah, you know, just, just reaching, to scrap together a store, scrapping stuff. I've heard out. early stories of you putting your own stuff on the wall. Yeah, absolutely. I wanted to make it look bigger. You know, I didn't have enough stuff. Um, I started out with ten grand. I couldn't use all ten grand. I had to have working capital. Of course. Capital. Yeah. So I only spent seven. You know, or a little over seven. And out of that seven, I had to build stuff and get. I had to buy a phone. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I didn't have anything. You didn't. You were. You That's why I had this phone. You know. Yeah. Uh, stuff like that. And I remember uh, I have a picture somewhere of uh, I had a, a twenty-two inch uh, Humesenberg cymbal case, and I put it on the wall like this because I had a cowbell. Yeah. And and a couple other things, but I knew if I put that up there, it would fill up the fill the wall. Yeah, it would fill the wall and look better. Yeah. So I was always on that. I also had uh, a black and white TV, and I was one of the first people around to have instructional videos. And the first okay. three we had were uh, Louis Belson, Steve Gadd, and I uh, can't think of the other one. Uh, can't think of that third one. It's a shame. Uh, Terry Bazio, I think. Okay. Anyway, uh, uh, I had this thing called – Back then, you remember video stores, of course. Well, they were brand new in 1985. We had a we had a store in Lancaster called Video 54. It was spun off a of Studio 54 in New York. Okay. Video 54. It cost fifty four dollars to join it. Okay. And for the luxury of renting their of renting video their, tapes, yeah, exactly. So I said, I'm going to do that. Perfect. I have drum. I have three video tapes. I yeah. bought a video player. It was called Video Pal, I think, mm-hmm. and uh, I rented the video machine and the three tapes as a special deal. Yeah, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, drummers would come in and go, "Wow, you have that, you know, video tape. And this is all new." Yeah, and they were like, "Okay, I would rent the video, rent it from you, and the machine, and the machine." Now, when they did that, I couldn't run it in my store because it's all I had. But when they bring it back, I'd run it on the yeah, TV, run it TV exactly time. And uh, I had a cassette tape that had something on it. I think it was sounds of, of, oh, it was a library list of what Simmons drum chip you could buy. Okay. So I had this whole rap. And what I would do is wait. I I would do this rap to someone. Mm -hmm. Oh, have you seen the Simmons drum? Well, of course you haven't, but we have it. And I would play it, and it would be like glass cracking or someone going, ooh. You know, yeah, the and that was new. Yeah, they like that. Yeah, so I go. Not only can you do that, but if you here's a library, and I would play the whole cassette of all the tape of all the sounds that you could hear. Yeah, and when they would leave, I would rewind the tape. Yeah, and I would set get it all back ready, up, and I wait there for the next person. You know, and yep. it could be hours. It could be a day. But you were you were primed. I was ready to do it. Your each pitch. time. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's, That's good stuff. That is good stuff. We still do it, right? Yeah. Don't, don't we still set the stage? Don't you? Of course. Yeah. We there's 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 certain things that it's like it's like okay that you know if if this this gets brought up and it's for the benefit of the customer to they ask about this we're ready with not only this information but we've got this this and this and yeah. then before you even ask your question here's the answer. Yeah. Right. Try to answer everyone's questions before they even have to ask, and you're good to go. And that's, you know, that's what folks look for in a local drum shop is they want that expertise. They can Google it, but the questions that they have, like we were talking about earlier, like our quick questions, are not 
easily found. Yeah. And you might find a hundred different answers. They're personalized. Very specific. Personalized. You can't get that personalized. Yep. Very specific to Hey, you know what I used to on. say about uh, – you were talking about the symbol thing. When someone goes – when they look at the symbol display and they go, wow, what's the difference? I used to say, if you don't know the difference, just get the cheapest one. <laughs> Because why should you spend four hundred dollars right. if you don't know the difference? You know that's a get that's the, a good answer. Get actually. the cheapest yeah. one, then it's not going to make the cheap any difference. Ones. If it doesn't make a yeah. difference to you, because they don't know. You know, you hit a four hundred dollar symbol. You you could hit a fifty dollar symbol, and if you said to them, "Hear that? That sounds good, right?" You, I mean, no They're, one would ever do that, right? Of course but, not. But, but I'm saying they don't know. Hypothetically, especially the customer that's just starting out or just looking, it's they you don't have buy with your ears. Exactly, and and you, you don't start out with your ear being developed. I talked to someone uh, yesterday. Uh, Sean and I were talking to them. They were looking at their first drum set, and immediately, like the father of the the kid who was very lucky to have his parents be willing to start the conversation of getting a drum set. Yeah. I think I'll end up with a kit. But um, his dad immediately asked, you know, I was, showed him the kits, and he asked about all the brands, and I had that conversation of what drum set's best, you know, that quick question, that whole thing we went through. Yeah. And then immediately um, he's asking about the symbols and, like, what what symbol to get, and he goes into all these details of something that he read online. or Right. And it's like you you dove in before you even got your feet wet. Right. You know what I mean? And it's going to be overwhelming. What you need to do is start out with this and hear the reasons why, mm -hmm. and then he's gonna he's gonna buy a symbol. Right. He's gonna buy a symbol because he's the one playing, and there are so many different. You know, he's gonna play this drum set, and he might say these hi hats are the first thing I need to be replaced. He mm -hmm. might say this bass pedal's got to be replaced. He might yeah. say the symbol, but it's up to the drummer, and that only comes with, you know, practicing, playing, and experience. You know what I mean? You don't worry about what symbols you need to upgrade to until you find that your symbols. Yeah. You hear something off about them. It's all sound driven. And don't worry about the price or how much process they put into them. I mean, yeah. they're selling symbols that sound like trash can lids for 300 bucks. You know, it's all relative to your ear. Mm -hmm. We used to have this uh, really great guy, Clyde Lucas, a great drummer, teacher in Lancaster. He died now, but uh, he, w he was a great guy and, you know, revered by, by all the locals, you know, and, right. and more. But he would come into the cymbal room, and he would, like, hit a camber cymbal. That used to be a, a lower-end, you know, yeah. beginner entry-level right. cymbal. Right. He didn't go, yeah, I'll take that. He didn't care. He, that's, that, he, liked it, he liked that sound, and he imagined that sound on his drum set and how he would do that. And this is a good drummer. This is a really Absolutely. smoking great drummer yeah. and he would he would he didn't care about all that all that stuff you know i think that's yeah and and i, I admirable we, we try to encourage folks to do that we do blind tests of things way oh, more. I that love always that. the blind test is my favorite stand behind i have the wall, not seen this stand over do you here. have this on do you have blind tests on, yeah we uh, just the last blind test that we did was the when we had the ufip symbol tour here oh. we did ufip versus zildjian ignore the name ignore the you know oh, the legacy tough. Go behind, and we have that half wall up there. Go behind the half wall, hit one symbol, hit the other. Pick your favorite sounding symbol. Yeah. We're just not going to tell you ear. which is which. Just use your ear. And yeah. it was, we did it about 10 times. I think nine out of 10 were the UFIP over the Zildjian. Really? Yeah. And you it's just, know. if you're following your ears, just you ignore all that stuff. Yeah. You just, just ignore all that stuff and focus yeah. on what's important. And yeah. I would, I would love to have, to be able to see um, if somehow there was this, you know, if you, Put in your ideal sounds if there was a machine or some sort of program where you could click up a button, see what your ideal setup would actually be. And I would love to see the people who are playing drums that cost this much and are ah. up here. And it, and it says, here's you don't care about drums. You're using the entry-level drums. And you spend a lot on your hi-hats, but your, yeah. your, your ride cymbal is a camber cymbal. Yeah. That's your ideal sound. I wish there was that technology because yeah. if you follow your ears, you'll end up with a lot of different results. Um, but GPT. Just ask GPT. I, that's you. what I'm saying. That's we're really we're really plugging that. We're waiting for the next. Uh, it's amazing, folks. It's crazy. You need to you need to get out there. Um, it's this week, right? I, in history, I, it's this week that they. Well, wait, wait. Last, last yeah, this this past yeah, yeah. week they unveiled that. All right, that's going to be it. I'm telling you. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Okay. Um. So, moving forward, Queen Street, uh, is the next 
Avenue, Plum Street. What are we looking at square footage wise? Six oh five North Plum Street. I got it for one hundred and fifty bucks a month rent because it had no heat. So, wow. okay. But I knew I knew about space yeah. heaters. We had space heaters yeah. in nineteen eighty five. Not a problem. And my family used them. So yeah, you know, not big a big whoop. deal. Had yeah. a bathroom. So huge. Had a bathroom. I built a drum room. Uh, uh, drum uh, studio and behind the counter okay uh framed that up insulated it started teaching right away back there uh and uh john pfeiffer who still teaches at uh, your store here right now uh (laughs) was uh if not the first teacher you know one of the first uh at drums etc i think he might have been the first and uh we started teaching right away there and that was a thousand square feet I doubt if it was. I bet it was eight hundred. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I rounded it up to make it sound to make like it sound a thousand. More grand. Uh, we rented out fog machine every weekend. I have a picture of the sign. It says fog machine twenty five bucks. Yep. that's that's crazy. That's so awesome. Yeah, that's fog a, machine. Yeah, and, and it's funny because I um, I I was talking with um, Roger the other day. Roger um, Lee. Lee. Roger Lee. Who was there your opening day. <gasps> he actually, he showed up before you got, you were open. Oh my God. And it was like, oh, they're not open yet. Oh, okay. Uh, and then, you know, went, went around the block. He wasn't your first customer. He wasn't okay. your first customer. He didn't make the first purchase. He was technically there right before you opened. open. Came back the first day and I was talking to him about what the first shop was like. So I was, I was telling him that we're going to probably end up get, getting into the, digging into things. And, Interesting. and when I see those pictures from that first store, and I see the smoke. Half the time, I'm like, is it cigarette smoke and the whole place is, or is it a fog machine? Because I knew both were happening at that time. It was both. Okay. Yes, yeah, smoking was still cool to do in the stores in 1985. We had an ashtray there, and I was a big smoker, and mm-hmm. 90% of my customers were too. And we would smoke all day. Uh, and then by nighttime, luckily the ceilings were high. They were like... Okay. 12 foot high ceilings and uh there would be this haze you know mm-hmm. like land at the top at night you know it, it would choke you you know uh we didn't stop smoking in the store until 1990 i think wow that's when we made the you said all right maybe maybe yeah. we shouldn't do this because i think they stopped smoking at the mall then or something and that was status something quo. triggered yeah you were still smoking in restaurants then yep. in the back you know, yep. like that did anything. Yep. Uh, so no one really complained about it. Uh, but yeah, we do. We we did not run the fog in the store normally. Of, right. You know, right. we didn't do that. It was that that smoke that That's you would a see lot. would it's, be. It's intense. That's what I was talking about. And I remember seeing the the last picture that you posted. I saw the fog machine picture. I was like, wait a minute. That was the fog machine. That, that went this out. is a lot. This is definitely fog machine. This is yeah. the stage photo. Um, yeah. But I love seeing pictures of that. We were talking about this. If you can get me some of the old old pictures through the eras, I'd love to put that out on our social now, oh, yeah. so that people can see that and see you know the oh yeah the, the, through the years the drum shop because I'm yeah there, we have so many uh, amazing long term customers yes they're still coming in they're like Roger in. Mm-hmm. yep they're still coming in exactly and I I love to just to just uh, put that out there you know long lost pictures and I love when you've got pictures of them or their kits stuff like that yeah because then you're just like well well well. You look a little different. What happened to all that hair? You know, yeah. like I love that grilling conversation. I love having that that discussion. So that would be awesome. Yeah. Well, then we moved to Queen Street. Yes, that's what you're going to say. That's what I was going right? to say. Yeah, from we six oh five North Plum Street. Of you know eight to nine, uh, eight to a thousand square feet, no heat. Went to Queen Street. I bought Tony Mariani's music store, a shop, uh, the space from Tony Mariani. And uh, along with that, that's where my uh, sort of my real estate uh, venture started to uh, cultivate. Because above Tony Mariani's store, there were seven apartments. And there was also a pizza shop next door. And uh, the seven apartments pizza. So we – we good? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Uh, So uh, I got that from Tony on a handshake too. And now the place was like – completely destroyed so i think he was 
he was really happy that I was taking it over. Yeah. But but still, like I remember him coming in the store and he, and, uh, and he said, "Hey, Rick," he said, "I just wanted to take a look at you and uh, you know get to know you." He says, "I think it's going to be okay." You know, we shook hands and then that was that. Made that that spot our own. That was uh, about two thousand square feet. Okay. We made two you doubled two, your space. Double space, put two teaching studios downstairs. Okay. Our, uh, uh, our music lessons started at, at uh, Plum Street at, uh, well, I don't really remember uh, exactly, but they were under 10 bucks. Okay. And then uh, by the time we were at uh, leaving uh, Queen Street, they were 13 and we still had that the sign. The chalkboard, we still have it. The chalkboard, yep. $13, you know. And... Uh, it's about halfway through. I was there for ten years, and uh, that was during that whole drum industrial revolution, man. And it was just mayhem of local customers. I was going to say it was in before store. internet. Yeah, still yeah. before internet. For nineteen uh, ninety to ninety nine. <laughs> we had a great drum shop, and everyone was walk in just, customers. The only and, place and, to go and mail order. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, mail order and that and that's and we answered the phone and we had catalogs and no computer yet, so I ear I earmarked all of our catalogs and we kept it by the uh, by the uh, phone, and then mm-hmm. when when someone would, Sean will remember this because we did it for years even after computers mm-hmm. you know we were computerized, yep. Yep. and uh, you would answer the phone. Yes, and we would, we would quick get to these places in the catalog, and we'd get it, and we would make the sale, and we'd have to hand write it out on a sheet, yep. and then we would ask for their card number, and then we would run their card on a machine, and we would do all this thing and say, okay, you know, it'll be there, you know, in seven days or something. And again, no one cared yep. that it was seven days. Yep. Of course. And uh, uh, that's how we processed orders for 15 years. And we were highly successful at it. Yeah, you were killing it. Those are yeah. like, like you said, those are the heydays, man. That is like, yeah, that's great. I met Sean at uh, uh, Queen Street. He was a kid, and uh, he was taking lessons there. And mm-hmm. he had long blonde, uh, like colored hair. He had oh, yeah. hair all different, like skaterish guy. There's always he's got had many generations of hair, but yeah, that is long hair, Sean. Skinny. Yeah. I always thought it? I talked to him, but he, he, you know, he, he, to me, wasn't really all that outgoing at that at that point. Not that I remember, but yeah. he was a nice guy. Yeah. And uh, and uh, he had a problem with a pedal. He had a problem with a pearl pedal, and we had replaced a part on it a couple times. Yeah. And it was it it kept breaking. And Sean, he's like, I don't know how old he was, maybe, how old were you, Sean? Uh, 16, 17. 16 or 17. He's paying for this out of his own pocket. He's getting ticked. He's getting ticked. <laughs> we, one day I'm in the office, one of the uh, employees comes back and says, Rick, Sean's out there again, and he's mad. He, he lost, you know, he, this is broken for the third time, yeah. and he's, like, really mad, and he's, you know, ready to. It's frustrating. Yeah. So I am so fed up because I have other things to do, right? Yeah, of course. All right. I went right out there and I said, Sean, give me that pedal. You pick any pedal you want. Just pick any pedal you want. Isn't that how it went? Something like that. And Sean picked out another pedal, and that's how we met. And after that, I pretty much – Seeing him then, it's kind of like what cemented our relationship. Right. And then later on, uh, I'm not sure even how uh, how we got together, Sean. Uh, how was that? Well, I can say to work that, here. Uh, I still own that pedal. Still got the pedal. That was, uh, that was at, on Queen Street. That was Tama Iron Cobra. Tama Iron Cobra. I played it this morning. I was. I literally. He played his Tama Iron Cobra this morning. This morning. From 1990. 1999. Yeah. Game changer. Yep. And uh, I can say that how we got together was I started coming in for drum lessons on New Holland Avenue before the, the shop opened. Ah, he took drum lessons so on uh, New Holland Avenue. Brock, Brock. To come in. Yes. And still make a living. That's it. And I took drum lessons in 
every room on before the, the shop was done in the basement in yeah. the kitchen apartment uh in your office yes in the attic before the the studios were done so you got to know me coming in continuing drum lessons right and uh you and i got to talking and i think you may have asked brock about me and said hey do you think maybe sean would want to work here part-time right and brock asked started me, part-time and i said you were around <laughs> the rest around. is history folks the rest is history um so yeah um on Queen Street, that is wild. I mean, it's not wild to think about, but it's kind of amazing. Like that heyday, you were in, you were on Queen Street, and like, like you were in the middle of things. You know what I mean? How important was it um, that location? Do you think? Well, for locals, I think it was. It was absolutely a good move. Uh, however, as times changed, uh, the next step. You know, I saw. As you know, many of our customers are live in the suburbs. You know, the majority of our customers live on the suburbs. Mm -hmm. They aren't. They don't live in the city. We were in the city. Yeah. A lot of people don't go down into the city unless they need to. Luckily, we were a destination store, so they were coming into the city. Yeah. But man, I would see, uh, uh, you know, soccer moms come up to a parking space and just panic. And just drive on, yeah. Because they didn't want a parallel park because right. traffic was behind yeah, them and they were freaking much. out. Yeah. And then I would call people and they would or talk to people on the phone and they would say, you know, we're really far away, you know, and they'd be from Lidditz, you know, which is about five miles outside. <laughs> yeah, of exactly. Town. You're not far. Well, away. We're we're from Lidditz. I don't know. So yeah. when we were able to get out of town and get uh, the, to the next stage where there was a parking lot. That was the game that changer was the game changer for the local walk in people. Right. That was a game changer. So being downtown was, yep. I felt great. We were in it. We had great years there, uh, sales wise. Right. I, I just I think wondered. The best, actually. The best. Okay. Because I was curious because I knew it was, it was hopping. I just wondered how much of the location that met. Because we were talking about moving and doing different things like that. Obviously, the location came along with that purchase and everything. Yeah. Um, I just wondered I wondered that because folks still talk about the Queen Street location. Huh. Um, and and uh, I just saw actually the other day the uh, the building directly, if you're facing the old drums, et cetera, building to the right is for sale. And I, I joked with Sean. I was, like, I was like, hey, man, maybe we move back to Queen Street. You know what I mean? And I was yeah. just like, I can't see like so many of our uh, – like customers, sure, but also like our lessons, our regular lessons yeah. now, and students and parents and stuff yeah. are more this way, more lit its way. Oh yeah, and I can't imagine no. moving downtown. No, and that was the first thing I said was parking. I said parking uh, was a nightmare. Downtown. It was a nightmare. Yeah, just the just the teachers and employees. Yeah, that parking yeah. alone is is tough, and that was before uh, internet, so. People were still accustomed to driving to go to specialty shops. Right. Imagine now, they're not doing it. No, no. I parallel park downtown or order it online. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, that, it it loses every time. Whew, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, I saw that and I was like, look at this, and I was like, never mind. Um, yeah. But um, eventually, yeah. Let's get let's dive into the the Sean era. So the Sean era. We transitioned from Queen Street to New Holland. Now that used to be. Um, Martin's Appliance, right? Yeah. Right, d directly. I mean, it was a, a, I'm sure it was a bunch of different things because there's very historic buildings. It used to be Martin's oh. Appliance directly before you moved in, right? Well, yes. Now, okay. let's just back up a second. Yeah, I was ahead. into building a website, okay? Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. See, I was you now back then where I was taking this stuff head on. Yeah. While other business owners were – not even considering that, I'm like, you know what? I think this internet thing is going to be big, and I'm going to be part of it. Just like the, the catalog, I thought, this is the next stage, Yeah. so I'm going to do it. Hired this company called uh, Trick Digital. It was uh, my, uh, Clark. Uh, uh, if, you ever wa if he's watching this, you're not going to forgive me. I can't think of his name. <laughs> Shoot. Anyway, Trick Digital. Yeah. Gosh, my first website was like twenty five or thirty grand. And, wow! And it 
In what? When was this? What year? This was 1998. 90. Okay. That's when we started it. Yep. 1999-ish in there. Finished it. Uh, got on board. And that's uh, also when we had our best uh, uh, sales years uh, in my history. So then I wanted to expand. And so I asked a realtor to help me. And every day on the way into work, I passed the New Holland Avenue store, and I would uh, look at it. And when I would explain to the realtor what I was looking for, I would say, you know, I would like a, s a small amount of parking because that's very important to having a local store. I right. said, you know, something like that uh, Martin's Appliance building, you know. And, he, and then he would say something, and I'd say, you know, I really like some nice big showroom windows, you know, because I, I really love my displays, and I want to put yep. them out there. You know, something like the – the Martin's Appliance Building, you've seen that. You know? yeah. And I kept referring to it. Yeah. One day I'm coming to work, and there was a big sign in, the, in their yard for sale. Man, I was on that. Yep. Right. Anything you could possibly do, that's it. That's the spot. It was there. I, I uh, bought it from Mr. Martin in uh, 1999. And then uh, I rehabbed it myself. No, yep. not just myself. Barry Salem worked for us, uh, so we would keep some of the crew over at Queen Street to mm -hmm. do it, and then I would ask them to come over and help me build over there. Yeah. So uh, Barry uh, Donlin helped me, uh, and Barry Salem helped me, and uh, uh, some other people. You know. Yeah. We did that all day long. I worked. Yeah. More, more what, what did it for folks that know what the New Holland Avenue store looked like? What was there what wasn't there it wasn't i knew you said it was pretty much an empty it was shell. Like, six thousand square feet okay and it was a mess inside but but it not not like a crack house kind of way but it was just you know the the old appliance store that was there for 20 years moved out and they just yep. left it they left how it how it was. was yeah so we just had to do our own thing and uh, put some uh you know yeah, fix it up the best we could. We did it ourselves, and it was fun. Mm -hmm. I met reps over there. Instead of at the old store, I would have them come over there, and uh, we would uh, we would meet and talk there, and uh, get get really excited about that place. And it was fun. It was a superstore, man. It was right. fun. I don't think back then, shock and awe was uh, was really popular. Yeah, I don't feel like shock and awe is now. I. Like, take – I thought about this. You know the, the grocery store Wegmans? Yeah. Is that how you say it? Wegmans or yeah, Wegmans? Yeah, I don't know. Wegmans. Yeah. Wegmans. All right. There's a little imported food shop in Lancaster called Mandros's Imported Foods. Okay. It's, it's 1,000 square feet. And they had the best – the best – uh, meats and cheeses like you will ever taste in your life. It is good stuff. Right? Yeah. Okay. I noticed – I've been in Wegmans a few times. I went in there. They have they have some of the same stuff. All right? I do not want to go in Wegmans and get that. I, why would I yeah. – I go to Mandros's, man. When you go in there, you smell it. And Billy comes out and says, Ricky, it's good <laughs> to see you. And then he – you know, he, he, I say, I just to call Billy, I'm coming in, make me, you know, get me a bag of stuff together. He yep. just does it. Yeah. Like Wegmans, you don't get that. Shock and awe. I don't want a grocery store that's shock and awe. I don't want, and mm -hmm. I don't think people want a music store that's that way anymore. I think the way this is here, boutique, you know when you're coming in here that it's like hand-picked stuff. Yeah. You know, and it's going. It's going to be good, and this, you're going to. Yeah, you're going to know your name. Absolutely, it's it's. I'm not just trying to plug no, the store. I, I understand I, that's, what you're that's saying. That's honestly how I think no, a lot of people it's, feel. It's definitely a trend. It is. It is developing good relationships with people. Of course, is number one priority. Um, but the concept of a curated collection is huge. Like that's like, way better. Way better than. Th but at that at the time that you moved to New Holland, it was. Massive no. shock and all. Yeah, lights on everything. Yeah, no as one many has ever as possible. seen that. Much. More, more, as more. As many as possible. As many as possible. Yes, we yeah. had a symbol room. Damn it, a whole room. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's where it was. You know. Yeah. Everything was b lots of it, and uh, the internet. The internet killed that. The 
The you, internet doesn't care if you have a symbol room. The internet does not care. It, it you, you can have as big a store as you want, but there's more on the internet. There's 10 times more on the internet than any store that you're going to have. Wow. Yeah, and it's it's a it's a balance. It is a necessity nowadays to have that online presence in addition to in-store. In addition. And, and I love to be able to blend the two because I think that, um, you know, mm-hmm. having a warehouse full of symbols is the most disturbing, sad thing Ugh. on the planet. Oh, having a money. drum shop and all the well, yeah, that too. Tied but I'm just up. saying, I'm just saying that that business model versus having this and having everything feed off of each other and having the community and having the drum shop talk like we're talking about. Yeah, you know, and having that interaction. That's what you want. You know what I mean? And that's that that's my the priority. romance of it. That's it's the, the romance ro- of it. Of course, of course. And it's it's a huge priority for me to have like community first. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and and developing those relationships is is worth so much more than than anything. You know what though? It's like um, it's it's a hard road though. Yeah, it's a hard road. Like you know, like the guys here are so nice, and and uh, and other stores too. You know, yeah. other stores across America, your your local music store people are so nice. You know, and they're trying to make you know a good business and get sales and to make it happen. But it's like gravity. It's like always, you know, you're starting over, you know. Yep. C- please come in our store, you know. Uh, and that, that that does drag you down. I mean, it takes your energy away, you know, when you're trying to do s- right yep. by people and uh, and get, th- get that community aspect through. Uh, it's not so easy to make that happen in today's, today's world. And, yeah. Uh, but the important right. thing is that it's it's the fight worth fighting. It's the fight that you fought. You I'm in it. it. You're fighting. We're it. making it happen, you know. And and it's one of those things that the investment and the payoff is it yeah beyond worth any of the the stress about it. But but yeah, I I appreciate that plug. I mean, now you know running a small shop like this, it's one of those things that I value. I value shopping differently. I have a different perspective on things, and uh, it's yeah. one of those things that I it. I hope, and I'm starting to see a shift. I hope that the shift back to brick and mortar, talking with someone, that is the value of that has gone up. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's nothing but um, accentuated by the social channels and things yeah. like that. You know what I mean? So so tons of the stuff that we're doing, videos. You know, we're just taking yeah. feedback from people, just saying, "Hey, what's Service. up?" Yeah, you know, so I can I can extend out through the internet and offer that to other people, and that's yeah. use that as a tool rather than something as a drawback. But yeah, yeah. We were talking about teaching yesterday. Mm-hmm. Teaching's huge. I mean, I don't see that. I know some people have done some good, you know, uh, websites that, you know, have teaching. And we, of course, tried Zoom teaching over the pandemic and all. But nothing I saw really comes matches anything uh, uh, comes up to, to the quality of having, you know, music lessons at the store. And I was always just uh, such a fan of that. And you have it here, and that is irreplaceable. That is the great one of the greatest things about this shop too is you know the amount of students that come in here, and uh, the the way you're thinking about cultivating that, and that that's a huge thing. You know, I mean, I am really proud that you want to go down that road Absolutely. because that that's all part of it they're they're the drummers of tomorrow you know? and it's always been synonymous yeah I, I have no interest in in sitting here and collecting money from from any of the old guard until they all die that is not it is it is inspiring new people to pick up the sticks and yep. continuing and helping them on their journey that yep. is just that's yep. where it goes that you know, is that's where it goes so uh new holland ave location that's where Sean, Sean was already there, but Sean's he came into the picture. Now, oh, Sean is Sean has begun his journey and legacy, which is continuing to grow. Uh, eventually, you, you know, tons of folks. We could sit here and name names of. You had a pretty extensive staff coming through there. Yes. Six, seven people at one time. Different part timers coming yeah. in here. People filling in. Teachers. You know, yeah. definitely be, Great being that that hub yeah. of of helping drummers out when they need a job. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? And connecting to the community i just so much happened inside those walls oh my god so many stories uh 
So many stories. I have I, I have a favorite story. I was I was hoping you were going to ask me my favorite story. So you yeah. didn't. I'm going to tell you my I favorite story. I just gave you the opportunity. <laughs> I gave it. I just served it up. Robert, I can't say his last name, was a prisoner in uh, some penitentiary in the middle of Pennsylvania somewhere. He was doing 20 years hard time. He went in in 1985 okay the, the year the store opened. the year the store opened Rob, robert went in then in the mid 90s i got a handwritten letter to drums etc explained it's three pages in mm -hmm. perfect penmanship no lined paper it was unlined paper perfect lines three pages of it no eraser marks mm-hmm Hi, I am Robert such and such. I, uh, I'm in jail right now, but when I get out, I'm really interested in getting a drum set. And this is the drum set that I've always dreamed about. And I have your catalog, and I just wanted you to clarify a couple things for me, a couple prices. Yeah. So I looked at that letter and thought, ah, I mean, I'm sorry. I was judgmental, okay? I was like, ah. Oh, I have to. I have to add this. He said, "I'm not." He goes, "I'm not getting out till uh, 2005." Right, right. Your priority. It's 1995, and, it's and I got a letter of someone who wants me yeah. to work up prices for them for 10 years from now. I'm like, okay, whatever, yep. you know. But I responded somehow. I don't remember how. Six months later, I got another letter from him. Thank you. That was really nice. But what about this setup? Three more pages. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my gosh. So I quick, blah, 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 I send it. Six months later, eight months, nine months later. Yeah. Okay, that's that's pretty good. But what do you think about this? And blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I'm like, this is funny. I'm showing it around to everybody. Do you believe this? Oh, I'm going to spill it out anyway. And I did it. Three years later, hey, I just thought of another thing I want. This happens, okay, mm -hmm. over the years. Just continues. Continues. To grow. Yeah. It's a long time. Now, 2000, I want to say 2003 comes. He says, Hey, good news, Rick. I think I'm going to get out in 2004. No, so it's like 2001. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He goes, I'm going to get out in 2004. To him, three or four years from that date is, is like pretty close. To yeah. me, it's still ridiculous. Like, I'm making notes right, here for right, something that's happened four right. years later. I go, okay, all right, right. So 2003 comes. Hey, it's, it's really starting to look good. Well, after all of that, I used to live above the store. People might not know there was an apartment above drums, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And uh, I lived there for, uh, for a number of years. And... The employees were always very nice about not bothering me in the apartment, you know. That was my personal space, so no right, one said right. anything. Yeah. But on this day, I don't know, it was around 2004-ish something. I thought it was Sean, but he just says it wasn't him. It was one of the guys. Yeah. I'm in the shower in my house, and someone says, Rick, Rick, it's one of the guys. Put a towel around myself. And I go out and I go, what? You know, they yeah. go, Robert, such and such is down in the store right now and he wants his drum set. Right? Yeah. He's, he's I freaked out, yeah. Adam. I got dressed as fast as I could <laughs> and I went down. Robert almost said his name. <laughs> his, his mother drove from Florida all night to pick him up at the Pennsylvania Penitentiary at 9 in the morning. And by 10 o'clock, he was at our store wait, waiting for it to open. He did 20 years. Unbelievable. <laughs> and he wanted a drum set. You know, what would most people do when they come out of prison after 20 years? What would you want? A nice meal? Uh, maybe get Jeez. laid? I don't know. And the first but thing he did was come to the drum shop. The first thing he wanted was his drum shop. And he came in in this in the same clothes that he went into the prison in 1985, which now are 20 years, but, you know, they're tight on him. You yeah, know? yeah. They're tight on him, and he has the big uh, 
the big glasses, you know, that yeah. were, were uh, who's Toto's drummer? Uh, Jeff Beccaro. He had the Jeff Beccaro glasses on <laughs> and, and a real tight T-shirt. Yeah. And he had never seen a charge machine. Yeah, he was yeah. Ama- he was uh, uh, amazed that we had a electronic charge machine because when he went in, it was like chunk chunk, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he was swearing up a storm, like every uh, it was f and this and f and that uh, over yeah. after everything. He was real, you know. He was taking yeah, cigarette yeah. breaks. He just got out of prison an hour ago, and now he was coming in to get like a nine piece Ludwig classic, uh, full hardware. Uh, 12 symbols. The whole shebang. Cases. Yeah. Yep. This was uh, over a $10,000 order. Yeah, and you had already quoted him all this. Yes. You, you're on the hook now. Like, I'm so on yeah. the hook. Yeah. Not only did I quote him the price, I told him it would be ready for him when he got out. Because <sighs> I, I, I never thought it would happen. <laughs> what? <laughs> and he came, and, and he yeah. did. And they did the whole nut. They did the whole nut. Now, I had... Uh, he had picked the symbols out and, you know, all this stuff, cases. He left with everything that day except the drums because I didn't have them. Right. So I sent them to him in Florida, and I never heard from him again. But I always – that story will uh, always uh, resonate with me because he – he that's the passion of drummers. That is. That's, I it, mean, that, that is so incredibly tilt. – That's it, man. Out I of just prison. want to play the drums first thing. We asked him. You yeah. were there, right? No, I wasn't you there. You weren't there. We but, asked him what he did. But Travis, uh, I'll say that. <laughs> we had to ask what he did. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Travis geez. asked him what he did. Travis asked. And he well, said he uh, was a burglar. He was a burglar. He was a burglar. And then, of course, Travis said, were you good at it? And he said, and he said apparently not. Apparently not. Apparently, apparently not. not. Oh, boy. <laughs> Well, seems all like- right, Robert. I hope you have that nine-piece drum set still, and I hope oh, yeah. you, I hope you uh, stayed out of jail and are going down the right line now. Wow, that's amazing. That's a great story. It I'm glad. Is. I'm so glad you shared that. Um, yeah. So yeah. So eventually, we all we all show up at New Holland Avenue location, and are there you, there for what twenty about twenty, 20 years. years, right? Yeah, twenty yeah. years. O- over twenty years. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. over over twenty years. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, before um, those of you that don't know, we've we've since moved. Um, we we are now in Neffsville on Lidditz Pike, just down the street, only like fifteen minutes away, but uh, in a different location. But I want to quick just touch on five fifty lofts because you're here, and I want to just I want to talk about it a little bit. There is now the opportunity for folks who went to that drum shop for twenty years. I won't make this an infomercial. Okay, but it's just awesome. Why not? It's awesome to me that. You can now live in the drum shop. Yeah, the drum shop was so cool. was uh, uh, turned into twenty three apartments and a commercial spot. There. There's a little ice cream shop that's, that's moving in there soon, and uh, that was my dream for many years. I I enjoyed uh, investing in real estate. That has always been. A thing that I uh, that I've cultivated through the years, and that started and, at Queen Street, right? When you took over the shop there. Uh, well, or I did about, own okay. I did own a house before that. Uh, quick, quick about that. Yeah, I, yeah. When I the first five years of of owning any business, you know, it's tough to to turn a profit. I mean, it doesn't matter what kind of business mm-hmm. you're in. It's it's hard, and I couldn't either. I mean, it was slim pickings, and so I played every night, and. Uh, you could back then. You could play five nighters, and I did. We did a lounge s- circuit. Every hotel had a nice lounge with a stage, and it was real popular for a band to play five or six nights a week. And you played usually from nine to one thirty or ten to two. And I did that every single night because I had a family. I had two kids, little kids, wife, and uh, the store wasn't making money, so I had to do this. So this, I'm getting to the real estate. Yeah. I came home one late night. Uh, I was sitting it up as like two or three in the morning. I'm watching TV, and Dave Del Dotto comes on. He's a get rich quick real estate uh, 
infomercial type gotcha. guy. Gotcha. He's got the people with Hawaiian shirts mm -hmm. sitting in Hawaii yep. who made yep. it big. Yep. And he's and of course they followed his plan, and so they're rich now. Now they're rich. And all I all he's asking me to do is send him three hundred dollars, and I get the cassettes. That's it. Of how to do it. Three hundred dollars. That was a lot of money. That was my, you know. <laughs> yeah. Mortgage payment. Yeah. So uh, back then. <laughs> right. Right. So I did it. I yeah. scraped up that money. I said, you know what? I'm gonna make. Make something of myself. I'm going to yep. do this. And I Learn sent how it, to do it. Got the cassettes. I did the whole thing. I was going to go buy this property in Lancaster for, uh, you know, I thought I was going to get it for like 5000 because it was a, a auction. And Dave Del Bedado said if you go to an auction and buy a property, it's going to be yeah. cheap. Yeah. Well, I get there and there's 50 people there bidding it up. And I lost. And it was a heartbreaker. Yeah. And uh, what happened was a month later, the people that uh, got that property – uh, could not get financing. And he knew that I really had my heart on that property. So the auctioneer called me and said, Rick, if you, if you buy that property for the, for the amount that, that uh, you know, these uh, guys won on auction, yep. the owner said they will finance the whole thing for you and give it to you. Uh, I had to put some money down. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do it, you know? Yeah. And that's how I, that's how I started that one property. So Dave Del Dotto, that thing was not did, – did not pan out. But if it wasn't for Dave Del Dotto, you wouldn't I would have, have never gotten, taken the, the courage step. to do it. I wouldn't have the courage. So yeah, that's, that's my I, – I think uh, everyone should yeah. take a risk. Yeah, you need, you need to, to just go for it. Yeah, Sometimes. after I got that you house, got I was into it. And uh, when I had the, tr the chance from uh, Tony Mariani – uh, same yeah. thing. The place really needed fixed up, but I wasn't. Uh, I was fine with getting my hands dirty and and trying yeah. to fix it up. You know, I didn't really know any better. Um, sometimes that's good. Yeah, and you just build on that experience too. Now you know a little bit more, and then you know a little bit more. Yeah. Same thing with the drum shop. Like you said, you got yeah. started, and you were just like not really sure how to do this, and your, your oh. buddy told you to do this. That's what do you do when it. you have a small business. You that's it. you figure it out. You Constantly. impress me. Uh, you didn't even know you did, but uh, a couple of days ago we were talking about. Finding a, a making a, another space in the store, yeah. And uh, you looked at it and you're like, "I can build that. I can build that." And you know that, yeah. I I said, "Well, that's." I was thinking that when you said, "I'm like, yeah, that's how I always felt." Of course, I can build that. Yeah, I don't need to worry about finding someone to build that. You can do it. Yeah, and there's <laughs> there's definitely it's really it's bizarre the amount of skills that I picked up from other things that have translated into right. this because because once you once you just for anyone who wants to start a business where I mean you you do everything you know yeah. you do everything and yeah. and if that means putting up a wall that means putting up a wall if that means painting painting the front window like I saw you the first time I met you yeah you're out front sweating your butt off painting the front window like because yeah. it had to be done and if you didn't do it who was going to do it and you're no not going to pay someone to do it no you can't you don't have not. enough money <laughs> so, exactly so you you just, you just pick just up things it. and learn things but yeah that's 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 yeah. awesome yeah that really affected me uh actually when you said that yeah yeah, yeah you just you good just make, for you make it happen yeah just make it happen one way or the remember other. I said what about the door yeah I said he's going to chicken out in the door you go nope I'll put the door on done. I said that's great. <laughs> Done. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Done. Figured yeah. out. That's it. That's the attitude you have to have. You but know. now, because you figured it out, 550 Lofts has been made a reality. I did not do that myself. You didn't. I was going to say. <laughs> and he put every nail and every board. No, you no, did not. No. That was done but by But because very... of everything, you, you, built, you built everything on top of each other and yeah. Made, yeah. It, made it happen. I'm so, really proud of that building. It's a beautiful building. Uh, and uh, But what... The memories of the store, you know, outweigh that. That was a great, great run over there. And uh, moving over here is going to be, the, you know, another chapter. And there's always – that goes on and on. So yep. it's uh, – you know, what it really became, it, that was too big of a store. Just like I was saying about the shock and all, it, it doesn't pay anymore to have that kind of real estate as a music store. At one time it did, but it doesn't now. It doesn't. It doesn't need to be that big. Yeah. You don't need a yeah. hundred and fifty snare drums. You know. You yeah. don't need two hundred cymbals. This, this, 
you're you're getting personal with the audience now. They're thinking, I don't need two hundred symbols. <laughs> well, I don't need no no no. But yeah. Absolutely, and that's everything's going to continue and change. And if yeah. that era comes back around, just like things are circular, you know we're going to be the first ones to have a cathedral full of. Do tunnels. it, man! We're going to be there because it's we're constantly changing and adapting to what's going on. That's that is the name of the game: adapting, being humble, taking risks. Yep. That's yeah. That's it. That's it. Well, Good. awesome. Thanks for being here. This was. A uh, very, very nice interview. Thank you yeah. for uh, asking me to come. Congratulations. And uh, this is still a great team here, folks. Uh, Sean and Ryan and Adam here are second to none. And all the drum teachers here, the guitar teacher, Mark Ryan, awesome. The whole crew here is, yeah. you know, from from years back, you know. It's the same crew. It's not new people. It's The old guard is here. That's you know, it. The old new wait, the new old new old guard. Old new guard. <laughs> exactly. It's a good guard. It's a good guard. You train. I'm, I'm glad you keep me around. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, thank it's you. important. Hey, none of us would be here without you and yeah, we're all still nice. going off your your sayings and uh, you know, your your words of wisdom. So, it's uh, awesome having love. you here. But awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, here at Drum Key, if you want to contribute to the show, we do have a Discord, which is linked below, where you can type ideas. Also, comments on everything. Uh, we're going to clip this up, put it on social. So if you see uh, anything that you like, if you uh, have any ideas for future shows, just let us know, and we'll make it happen. As always, support your local drum shop. If you don't have a local drum shop, we'd be happy to adopt you. But thanks for watching, everyone.